Hello everyone, my project is on image recognition using multi-layer perceptron neural network. I will present how multi-layer perceptron neural network, also called as MLP, is used for image recognition. In this presentation, I will cover the following topics. The usefulness of image recognition. I will state the problem definition and goals and discuss the image recognition process, uh, how image is pre-processed and made ready for feeding it to the multi-layer perceptron neural network. I will demonstrate few concepts of uh, Vika and how to build the neural network model. Then I will analyze the impact of hidden neurons, uh, training time and other input parameters on the test correctness of the network. I will compare how neurons, training time, number of attributes vary the network test correctness. I did several simulation and graph and will explain the results and finally state the conclusion. Now why is image recognition important? Image recognition is used in various applications and fields of science. It has applications ranging from military, remote sensing, face recognition, medical diagnosis, geology, agriculture, space exploration. So it is important to recognize objects. Recognizing object instances and categories is a crucial capability for an autonomous robot to understand and interact with the physical world. Images can be recognized using computational models using multi-layer perceptron artificial neural network. These computational models are presented as a system of interconnected neurons that can compute values from inputs by feeding information through the network. The objective of this uh, project is to demonstrate the application of a multi-layer perceptron neural network to recognize images. I will discuss the binning algorithm which is used to represent the image. Then using Vika, I will build a computational model that classifies the images. Further, I will analyze how the number of hidden neurons and training time impact the performance of the model in correctly classifying images. I will also compare different options of MLP classifier that impacts the test correctness of the network. I will also use the same data set but increase the attributes from A2 to 64 to see how it improves the network performance. Finally, I will also use another data set having different attributes and measure network performance. Image recognition process. A image needs to be represented in the form of uh, attributes so that it can be fed as an input to the neural model. So the first step is to extract the attributes. Then these training image attributes are fed to the multi-layer perceptron network to train the model. The MLP network is a feed-forward neural network that uses back propagation as its learning algorithm. The network is composed of input layer, the output layer with the overall results and the hidden layers. These hidden layers contain hidden neurons that process the data and adjust the weights during the back propagation learning. And then the test images uh, or its attributes are fed to the trained network that classifies the images. The dataset that I have taken has 
105 instances of six classes of images airplane face kangaroo leopard piano strawberry and sunflower sorry several the table here shows the instances as shown in the table it has 100 instances of airplane 100 of face 86 of kangaroo and so on image pre-processing has several steps first we need to represent the image in pixels of rbg in density then we need to bend the pixels into eight attribute pins and derive the color histogram of the image and finally the image is represented into the arff format which is given as an input to vika so first we will understand how the image is represented in the pixels rgb intensity each of the image is actually made up of pixels images which are used in this project have about 60,000 to 70,000 pixels. Any of the color can be represented as a combination of uh, three basic color components, red, green, and blue. Each pixel is represented as intensity of red, green, and blue. A pixel of 255 bits can have the value of R, G, and B between 0 to 255. So, the image can be represented as a pixel 1, say for example has a RGB value of 24, 240, 55. Pixel 2 has 40, value of 44, 245, 210 and so on. All the 70,000 pixels have a RGB value. Now each of the pixel is bent into one of the 8 attribute bins based upon the table below. As we can see in the table that each of the bin represent a certain range of the red, green and blue values. Say for example the pixel of RGB intensity 130, 4 and 240 is bent to the attribute 5. In this way, all the 70,000 pixels can be classified or binned into one of the eight bins. Say for example, the airplane has 70,500 pixels. As we can see in the table, the pixels for this image are binned mostly into bin number one which has about 35,000, bin number two which has about 1,300 and bin four 3,000 and bin number eight. From this frequency we can also uh, derive the normalized frequency. Normalized frequency will be helpful in the case where some image have 60,000 pixels while some image may have 70,000 pixels. Once the image is represented in normalized frequency, then image is represented in the ARFF format. Line below over here in blue shows the representation of the image in ARFF format. The whole process of pixel extraction, binning, taking the frequency and calculating the normalized frequency is done for all the test and the train images. Finally, we come up with file as shown in the screenshot. Now the file is ready for giving it as input to the Vika. I will discuss a little about the multi-layer perceptron neural network. The multi-layer perceptron neural network is the algorithm which is used to build the network model. As we discussed earlier, 
It is a feed-forward neural network that uses backpropagation as its learning algorithm. It is composed of the input layer, the output layer with overall results, and the hidden layer. This hidden layer is consisting of the hidden neurons that process the data and adjust the weights during the backpropagation learning. After importing the file into Vika and setting the classifier as the MLP, the neural network model is represented as follows. Then the red neurons represent the hidden neurons. The yellow neurons represent the output neurons. Each neuron representing the image category, sunflower, kangaroo, face, piano, strawberry, etc while the green neurons represent the input neurons. In this network model, I have eight attribute bins. The value of A, which is the number of hidden neurons, the value of A, also called as hidden neurons, by default is the average of the input attributes and uh, the outputs. In this experiment, uh, attributes value is 8 while outputs is 7. So the value of uh, A, the hidden neurons, is 7.5. The learning rate is another option in the MLP classifier which specifies the amount the weights are updated. Momentum is another option which specifies the momentum applied to the weights during the updating. Normalized attributes flag specifies whether the attributes uh, should be normalized. Uh, normalized attributes actually improve the performance of the network. Uh, training time is an important parameter which specifies uh, uh, the number of epochs or the training time that the network should train through. Model analysis and comparison. I did four experiments to evaluate the test correctness of the model. First, by increasing the training time. Second experiment, by increasing the number of hidden neurons. In the third experiment, the image is represented into 64 bins instead of 8 bins. And in the fourth experiment, outdoor images are taken and represented with altogether different attributes. Experiment 1. A test correctness evaluation by increasing training time or epoch. I evaluated the multi-layer perceptron classifier for different training time with constant hidden layers to see how the network performs in classifying the images. The table below sh shows that the table below represents the values to the options of multi-layer perceptron classifier. Note that the hidden layer value is set to A while the training time epoch is increased from 10 to 500. The classifier results were evaluated at different epoch 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 and 500 and the table below shows the instances correctly classified out of a total 605 instances. Also, the mean square error MSE is noted during each network model. The graph shows the instances that are correctly classified. X axis represents the training time and Y axis represents the instances correctly classified. This experiment shows that as the number of epochs increases until 50, the network improves. However, after 50 epochs, network does not improve significantly. Increasing the number of epoch or training time increases the network test correctness until the epoch is reached. Experiment 2. 
test correctness by increasing hidden neurons. In this experiment, I evaluated the multi-layer perceptron classifier for different hidden neurons for a constant training time to see how the network performs in correctly classifying the images. The table represents the values to the options of MLP classifier. Note that the training time is set to the epoch 50 and the classifier results were evaluated at different values of hidden neurons ranging from 1 to 15. Table also shows the instances that are correctly classified out of 605 instances. The above simulation suggests that test correctness of the model increases as the number of hidden neurons increases to 8 neurons. However, after 8 neurons, the improvement in the test correctness is not significant. The test correctness becomes optimum at about 8 neurons. The value of A is also by default as 8. This, this simulation suggests that the test correctness increases as the number of hidden neuron increases until the optimum number of hidden neuron is reached. After this number, it does not increase significantly. The third experiment is about representing the image in 64 attribute bins instead of the 8 attribute bins. So in this experiment, there are 64 input neurons instead of 8 input neurons. Using the binning method, all the 70,000 pixels of the image are now into 64 bins. The performance of the MLP classifier is evaluated using different number of hidden layers, training time over the 605 instances. As we can see in this table, I choose the hidden neurons between 10 and 70. Also the trading time between 10 and 500. And I got very varied results. The green row shows that performance of the network was maximum when the number of neurons was uh, A. Uh, the trading time uh, or the epoch was 25 and the correctly classified percentages was uh, about 72 uh, percentage. In this experiment, where the input neurons are 64 and the image is represented in 64 attribute bins, the performance or the test correctness jumps to 72%. The maximum test correctness achieved by 8 attributes was only about 54%. This suggests that as the number of attributes increases, the precision to the image recognition also becomes better. Also, we see that as the number of hidden neurons increase and the training time increase, the time taken to build the model also increases. With 70 hidden neurons and 100 epoch, time to build the model significantly jumps to 9 seconds. With 36 neurons and 500 epoch, this time to build the model is 25 seconds. So in order to have an efficient network model, number of neurons should not be far more than the optimum number of hidden neurons. Complex patterns cannot be detected by small number of hidden neurons. However, too many of the hidden neurons can dramatically increase the computational burden. Here we will discuss more attributes which can be used to represent an image. Intensity mean. 
this attribute specifies the average of the RGB values over the image. It can be represented as R plus G plus B divided by 3. There are other attributes such as the mean of the red color, the mean of the green color, or the mean of the blue color. It specifies the average of the color on the image. There is another attribute which is known as the axis of the color, such as axis red color. This measure of axis red color can be specified as 2R minus the whole of green and blue. Apart from this attributes of uh, red, green and blue, there are also certain attributes known as hue, saturation and brightness which can be used to represent the image. Hue, saturation and brightness are aspects of color in the red, green and blue scheme. All possible colors can be specified according to hue, saturation and brightness just as colors can be represented in terms of R, G and B components. Hue. Hue is the wavelength within the visible light spectrum at which the energy output from the source is greatest. This is known as the peak of the curve in the graph below. In this example, all three colors have the same hue with a wavelength slightly longer than 500 nanometers in the yellow-green portion of the spectrum. Saturation. Saturation is an expression for the relative bandwidth of the visible output from a light source. In the diagram, the saturation is represented by the steepness of the slopes of the curve. Here, the red curve represents a color having a low saturation, the green curve represents a color having a higher saturation, and the blue curve represents a color with fairly high saturation. As saturation increases, color appears more pure. As saturation decreases, colors are washed out. Brightness. Brightness is a relative expression of the intensity of energy output of a visible light source. It can be expressed as a total energy value. In the RGB color model, the amplitudes of red, green, and blue for a particular color can each range from 0 to 100 percent of full brilliance. There are several other attributes in which an image can be represented apart from that one discussed uh, over here. Experiment 4. The Outdoor Image Recognition. This experiment outlines how different image attributes can be used in image recognition. This particular experiment has about 19 different attributes based upon R, G, B, hue, saturation, and uh, brightness. In this experiment, a data set used in image recognition has 2,310 instances and 19 attributes. These instances were drawn randomly from a database of seven outdoor images classified into the following classes, brick face, a sky, forage, cement, window, path and grass. The data set is imported into Vika. To increase the performance, attributes such as the classification, which was earlier a numeric value, is pre-processed to a nominal a value using the pre-process function no, numeric to nominal. The test correctness of this network was as high as 95%. The above experiment uh, helps to understand different attributes that can be used to represent an image. Conclusion. From the several experiments that I did here, it suggests that Increasing the number of hidden neurons increases
test correctness until the optimum number of hidden neurons is reached. After this optimum number, network does not improve significantly. Increasing the number of neurons beyond this optimum number may dramatically increase the computational burden. Also, this the experiment earlier suggests that increasing the number of epochs or trading time increases the test correctness until the epoch is reached. Increasing the number of attributes also increases the network's test correctness provided attributes are extracted currently.